collectively as a Hive community that we have intentionally come together to record an episode of the podcast live and in virtual person here. So thank you all for joining me. My intention with this recording is twofold. Number one, I want to help Hive members dial in your dream client power statements where you feel you need help. Number two, I want our listeners to have a better understanding of the power of dialed in, completely aligned language. So we thought it would be really fun to workshop our dream client power statements. Our first volunteer today is going to be Mel Mack. Mel, we'll call on you in just a moment. But first, I'd love to hear from Karen and then from Jody. If you want to just pop in and share your dream client power statements, because I know you both have worked on them and feel really proud of where you've landed. So Karen, go ahead and share yours. Hi, I empower creatives to take charge of their artistic life and follow their true path home. That's so beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. How about you, Jody? I help women eliminate bloat once and for all, damn it. The damn it is the key, right? The that's, that's the key. key. To it. Like, <laughs> you you can get rid of it. And that's why I'm like, damn it. <laughs> like, yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> What's around, right? Yeah. You also just deliver it with so much confidence, Jody. It's awesome. <laughs> All right. So Mel, let's get you feeling as clear and confident about your dream client power statement as both Karen and Jody feel. What I'm actually going to do, Mel, if you want to unmute yourself and say hello. Hey, thank you so much. I would love mine to be that short. Great. Um, so all of our volunteers, can you please triple check that the link you gave us actually allows anyone on the internet to edit? And do, I don't know if this was on our end or on Mel's end, but the link that I have, I can't get into the document. Oh. Do you want me to share my screen? No. Uh, okay. If Hang you on, could just one change one the second. settings and let us know. And if any of our other volunteers aren't sure, you can just privately message Julie and test, uh, test your links beforehand. Yeah, and then Kirsten, if you wanna share yours uh, before our next volunteer, that'd be super fun. Mel, if you wanna just cut and paste your DCPS in the chat, I can create a document that might be more efficient. I, totally, Kirsten, we're all just like, don't say a word. Mel, can you just paste it in the chat for me? You can't paste it in the chat. Okay. Um, I think I can grab it. Here, actually. Thank you. It's in the chat for you. Great. Okay, great. All right, so I'm going to, yeah, you're doing great, Mel. It's no problem. Um, what I'm gonna do is pick it up at, okay, Mel, you're up. So we'll start from there. Everybody ready? All right, Mel Mack, let's get you as excited and clear about your dream client power statement as Jody is. Thanks for volunteering today. <laughs> You're so welcome. Okay, great. Yes, I'm jazzed. <laughs> so before we dig into the nuts and bolts of your statement, can you just in your own words today share with your Hive, fellow Hive members as well as our listeners who you help and how, and then we'll get into the dialed in language here. I really do give stuck actors a personalized 
toolkit so that they can show up 100% prepared for agent meetings, manager meetings, on-camera auditions, and virtual auditions so that they feel like a professional in the yeah. world. Yeah. So what about your current dream client power statement feels like it's not hitting the mark for you? What's not hitting the mark is that I feel like in the past year, I attract different pockets of actors, mm. actors that are coming back to the business after retirement, actors graduating college, actors who already have agents and managers, but they just feel stuck or they're not booking the work that they want to be working, uh, booking. So is the common thread that they're not booking the work they want to be booking? No, because I feel like people that are new to the industry aren't even aware of what work they should want to be booking. <laughs> I'm going to push back on that for a second, and okay. I'm totally willing to be wrong here. But if I'm brand new, I'm probably not booking anything. And what I, the thing I want to be booking is something. I'll take anything, right? I just want to start acting. So in that sense, is it accurate that I, too, am not booking the work I want to be booking? Yes, accurate on the money. So could it be as simple as I help actors finally book the work they really want? Yes. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it feels so too simple, but yes. I know. Okay. So let's walk through what just happened. This is for everybody. Mel, I asked you, who do you help? right? And you started reading the dream client power statement that all of us were looking at. Mm -hmm. And then you just started talking. And when you started talking, you use language, something like feel like a professional or make their business real. There was something there about people going pro. And that's what I tuned into. The second thing I, then the thing I asked you was no matter where they're at in their careers, what's the connective tissue what is the thread and the thread is whether they're beginning and not working at all or they've been at this forever and can't quite get to the level of series regular they're not booking the work that they really want mm -hmm. so is there anything at all that's missing if your dream client power statement was as simple as i help actors finally book the work they really want feels so easy. I know, I right? <laughs> Where my head goes to is, oh gosh, so how do I break that down and have a clear message, uh, a clear through line through my courses with that? Mm -hmm. I know that you always say your marketing isn't meant for everybody. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So I help actors finally book the work they really want. If I'm a brand new, so how would you, I'm a brand new actor. Mm -hmm. Talk to me about how your course can help me do that. Well, we have a process at the studio, right? So uh, the first course really gets everybody started on how to pre prepare themselves to show up camera ready in the audition room and how to get off book, how to not feel like a newbie. Great. So, and that'll help me book the work I really want. Yeah. Perfect, because the work I really want is anything. It would just be great to be on a set at this point. Okay, so now let's say I've been around for a while and I have a resume that other actors would even be jealous of, but I, I feel like I've hit a plateau. Talk to me. That's a tough one, Dallas. That's where I get a little stuck because I'm so used to helping the first group. So am I, am I then not your target audience, the seasoned actor? I don't know because I coach them a lot uh -huh. and they take my classes a lot. Mm -hmm. So I just don't know how to target them because they don't uh, really feel like a newbie. Got it. All right. Let me reflect back what I heard you say to make sure I understand. You work with a lot of seasoned actors, but your marketing up until now has really been geared toward the newer actor. 
so you don't necessarily feel like you have the marketing air quotes here language to speak to the more seasoned actor correct okay let's think of a seasoned actor who's in your program we'll okay. call this person wilma okay what would wilma say about their experience working with you so that they can book the work they really want. Hmm. Wilma would say, <laughs> Wilma would, the Wilma I'm thinking of would say, this is the first time I've been in class in a while. It's been extremely helpful for me to be in front of the camera again, to get off book quickly, to have a step-by-step -step technique that doesn't feel like every other studio that's really a solid foundation for me to fall back on when I get nervous in the room. Yes. A lot. I help actors finally book the work they really want. Whether you're a veteran actor or new to the game, if you want a solid foundation that keeps you sharp no matter what, at our studio, you'll get the toolkit and the confidence to make that happen. Yeah, I like that. I get that feedback a lot. I feel much, yeah. much more confident. Yeah. I feel like I have a plan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Great. We're kind of a one-stop shop, so that's why it's so confusing for me. Yes. And I think the promise is very clear. Right. Whether I'm taking the class about auditioning on Zoom or whether I'm in your ongoing class really to improve my acting chops or whether I'm newer and I'm starting from the beginning, the promise is work. Mm -hmm. So in your messaging, it's all about like keeping your connection to that promise, no matter what part of the marketing you're talking about, no matter what class you're talking about. And that promise is booking the work you really want. How do we get there? Solid foundation to keep you sharp no matter what. So you have the confidence and the tools when you need them. Okay, great. How do you feel about where we landed with your dream client power statement? I actually, this is funny because it's reverse engineering. I think mm -hmm. our marketing might already say that. I'm just much clearer now yeah. when speaking to somebody about who it is I help and what it is I do. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. In as few words as possible. Yeah. I, I help actors book finally, and I think that's important, right? Finally book the work they really want. Mm -hmm. Great. Great. Dig it. Love it. Thanks for volunteering. Thank Thanks so that was much. awesome. So for those of you on the call here, if you notice, that fill in the blank worksheet that you have for the dream client power statement is two full paragraphs. We do that on purpose so that you've got a lot to work with and play with. And then we get to delete anything and everything that feels like extra. So for those of you who are listening to the podcast, whether you're a Hive member or not yet, I want to encourage you to write down who do you help? What is the thing that they want more than anything else? And what is the process you follow to get them there? And a lot of times the process you follow to get them there ends up not appearing in your dream client power statement. Other times it becomes your dream client power statement. So Hive members, that's why we do both so that we have a container uh, to work within uh, in order to know that we're deleting the right things. Okay, I wanna hand the mic to Kirsten. Kirsten is going to share her dream client power statement, and then we're going to hear from our next volunteer, who is Christina. I help women that are busy holding it all together to feel more nourished every day and more connected with those they love. It's so confident rolling off your tongue there. How long has it taken you to arrive at this spot? I think it's... The same power state I have when I entered the hive, I think that the noise has left. So I feel more embodied in the words. If that could make sense to anybody, I don't know, yeah. but the words have more clarity, more stillness, because now I think when you walked through with me in one of our recent calls, that that's what this, the container for the statement 
is this simple kind of mission and anybody can relate to it, but that there's going to be other avenues to unpack how you do this, who I am, what's unique about me. And that's more different kinds of marketing than the one statement. Yes. Beautiful. Thank you. Thanks, Kirsten. I let go, you know, and, yeah. now it and so it can sing on its own and I can be really present with it. Yeah, it shows. It shows when you share it. All right, let's hear from Christina. Hello. Here she is. Hi, Christina. Thanks for volunteering. Yes, thank you. All right. So before we dig into your dream client power statement, and I want to remind our listeners that we have a download for you so that you can follow along because all of us here at the Hive are sharing screens and able to read our copy. But before we dig into your copy, just share with us a little bit about who you help and how. Yes, I help women. Um, as we were, as I was listening to Mel talk, I was like, oh, I help women be confident. And I was like, it could be as easy as that. Like, <laughs> but I help them um, show up for themselves as like authentically confident without all the masks so that they can have deeper relationships and show up for the world. Yeah, that's beautiful. So what feels missing for you from your dream client power statement as it currently stands? As I just spoke it two seconds yeah. ago. <laughs> um, it feels like it feels like it should be more concrete. And mm -hmm. I don't know that that's true. Um, but that's what it feels like. Mm -hmm. Have you had much of a chance to share your dream client power statement with members of your target audience who aren't completely indoctrinated into your world? Um, not since I've done it. I did the spark interviews before yeah. um, the original. So maybe it's time to go back and just check in with them. Maybe. Why don't you and I work on one today okay. and then we will want to test that messaging. Okay. So tell me why your dream client power statement can't be, I help women be more confident. <laughs> well, I just, I don't, I, I guess I never really thought of it that way. Like I, it was just now as, as we were talking mm. about, I, like there could be one thing that I do, like, and that actually makes it much, much more clearer than all the ways that I used to describe it before, like all of the results. And it's like, when they speak to me, there's like every client I have, they want to be more confident. And I'm like, oh, well, that's pretty simple. Then, isn't it? <laughs> Think about all the ways I'm doing it right now, all of the ways I'll speak for myself and then invite you to follow along. As you share, I'm thinking about all of the ways I overcomplicate my marketing because shouldn't everything be a funnel, <laughs> right? Like shouldn't everything have bells and whistles and things and tripwires and, and um, sometimes unconsciously buying into that we miss the point with the people who are most ready to do the work with us. Mm. I do have one question. I love, I help women be more confident. I'm gonna read for everyone if it's okay, this original DCPS at the top of our page, is that okay? Mm -hmm. I help women with good on papers live, good on paper lives make their lives amazing. I encourage them to show up for themselves and their relationships so they feel confident, connected and impactful without guilt or shame. All of that is fantastic. And if I am more confident, isn't it implied? Is it rather implied that I am connected and impactful and don't have guilt or shame? Yeah, exactly. Right. Like, I think I'm just adding way so much in there. And maybe it was like, I was thinking I was like niching down somehow that, but no, that's exactly why we give them confidence that they can do all of those things. Yes. Okay. I'm going to play devil's advocate for a minute. Sure. Because there might just be a word that's missing here. So if I got into the back of an Uber and found your business, uh, your, a business card with your name and the DCPS, I help women feel more confident. Is that by helping me build more muscle? Is that by helping me learn how to put my makeup on the way I want to? Is that by giving me the best haircut I've ever had? Is that like, it might be a little too 
too open to interpretation. Yes. That's the fuzziness that I talk about that. It seems yeah. like it's just not quite enough. Yep. So, <clears throat> so how, what, what is it that I do? I help them look at their emotions and their thoughts and their core beliefs, which is nothing that they want to actually hear. <laughs> right. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like feel stuff. No, thanks. I'm not, I would rather not. Can I just go get a haircut? <laughs> exactly. So I, I mean, I help them do the inner work, right. Of really recognizing their gifts and their magic so that they can authentically feel more comfortable in the world. Yeah. Ah, uh, okay. So it's more about like an internal confidence, like something that beams out. Like when I think about a haircut or something, I think that that's like a temporary kind of feel good, right? Like I want them to have like long lasting, I think I'm an amazing person. Like my favorite client said that she was telling a friend that um, she really likes herself and she wished she had more of her to hang out with because and she's never liked herself before and that was like yes that's that's what i want to do right it's so nice i almost want to use that somehow so what i you you said long lasting you also said authentic like authentic or authenticity so I help women build long, a long standing, I think is what you said, long lasting confidence from the inside, but we've lost the power of I help women build more confidence. Mm -hmm. So I almost feel like I help women build um, more confidence could be like the headliner. And then like, maybe there's another sentence that describes that if I need to go on, because I think, I feel like, I feel like when I'm in person or when I'm talking one-on-one, -on -one, I can change that to make it, you know, to adapt to whatever they're going through. Um, but to have something that feels complete would be nice too. I help women build confidence that build authentic confidence. How does that feel? I really want to get authenticity in there somewhere because that is so, it's one of your core values. It's right? one of my core values. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And how much does it show up in your spark interviews? A lot because A lot. women say that they get tired of pretending like they're confident or pretending, you know, there's a lot of pretending in masks that they talk about. So there is something about being authentic and not like, I went and bought something. So I feel good about myself today. <laughs> yeah. Right. Okay. So when we look at the template of the dream client power statement, we have the, what I do part of it, and then the transformation part of it. And as I'm looking at what you had written here, I wonder if we also for you have two versions, mm. right? So we have the 30 second elevator pitch version, which is I help women build authentic confidence really how well if you want to feel amazing in your own skin and connected in your relationships i can help you give yourself permission to show up in your truth mm, that's nice yeah feeling amazing in their own skin that's usually something they talk about that they don't feel good in their own skin so right. i think those words are important too right say again what your favorite client said about liking herself she said that she was telling a friend that she liked herself so much that she wanted to hang out with more people like her, that she wished there was more of her. That's what she said, that she wished there was more of her to hang out with. And she's never, ever said that she liked herself before. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. That needs to show up in a lot of places in your marketing copy. Yeah. That's, yeah. that's the quote, right? <laughs> yeah, totally. All right. So can I hear you say this and we'll just see how it lands? So just that top sentence here and then down to the bottom. Mm -hmm. I help women build authentic confidence. If you want to feel amazing in your own skin and connected in your relationships, I can help you give yourself permission to show up in your truth. How does that feel? I like it a lot. 
I do too. It's yeah. simple, but it also, I feel is a more accurate or a more complete description of you, Christina. Yes. And it's more concise where like, I mm -hmm. felt like I was jamming in all these extra pieces to like, kind of explain how, and that is just a lot more clear. Yeah. That one feels really good. Yeah. Did we get it? I think we got it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, yeah, I feel good. I'm excited about this one. I can feel the excitement now. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Thank you so much for volunteering. I want to just highlight something. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's really important folks to share some of the how, otherwise you're like a hairdresser or a chiropractor or a stylist, like the list could go on and on, but we need to really dial in when we're sharing the how or the utility of why we share the how because oftentimes the how creates noise and therefore confusion but knowing the work that you do christina which is deep i felt like i give women or i help women build more confidence was incomplete in and of itself i did too great i'm also That's looking great. in the chat and you've got some great um suggestions here danny mentioned um so you, if you want to like yourself right if you want to if you want to be the your favorite person to hang out with right if you want to finally like yourself um i think we got to, to the essence of that in a softer way but language like this inside of your uh, marketing copy i think will be awesome yeah those are really great um Yes, really great words, though. <laughs> thank you for all the suggestions, yeah. Hive members. And thank you very much, Alice, for You're welcome again with me. So what's your next step around this? If so I'm going to go test it out with um, the people who only kind of know me. Well, I guess I can test it out. I can see if it rings true with my clients, too. But I also want to I'm doing a client search this month. So mm -hmm. it'd be a good opportunity to try it out and see if it connects with people. Yes. Let's get really clear on how we know if it connects, because I think there are a few data points. OK, specifically in relation to client search. Data point number one, if you reach out to your referral ambassadors and the feedback is, I don't know anybody, the thing that you've called your free intro co coaching session or your DCPS, one of those is unclear. Okay. Okay. So there's data point number one. Data point number two, if you get referral ambassadors who say yes, but no one comes, <laughs> You're unclear in your messaging. Number three, if the people who come do not match your vision of your dreamiest dream client, something is also misaligned in your messaging. This is one of the painful benefits of client search, right? We do all this work and then the wrong people come. <laughs> Aaron, you had that experience a little bit the first time you served, right? Or searched. So those are three really clear data points that reveal a lot around your messaging. And if I already sent out the ambassador letters, the original, the first one, I can mm -hmm. just nudge them with this new yeah. text and just say, hey, does this make it clearer? You know, does this make it a little easier for you to understand? Yeah. Or even I like to mm, blame myself instead of them. Blame isn't quite the right word here, but I might reach out and say, I gave this some thought and I realized I might be making your work too hard. Mm. Right. right. Uh, so I, I wanted to clarify in the, in as simple terms as possible, the people who I can help the most. Nice. Because I think I probably gave them a list of things that they were like, I, I don't know if I know somebody who fits this, but if I could say, Hey, do you know anybody that needs more authentic confidence? I bet you they can come up with a few people. Yeah. So, okay, cool. Then I right. will do that. Thank Great. You. Keep us posted. I Thanks, will. Christina. Thank you. All right. Any questions or observations inspired by my conversation so far with either Mel or Christina? You can raise your hand if you want to ask a question. Great. Let's hear from Karen. Karen, go ahead. Hi. So um, my question, I'm, I'm a little curious to hear more about when to apply the how into it, because that's something I've 
uh, been struggling with myself because I work, I work with fear. That's my main tool is understanding how fear tricks and manipulates you. And when you look at my dream client power statement, it doesn't mention fear at all. And so there's a part of me that wonders if I should add it just a smidge, or if I should just leave it out and kind of just leave the, the topic of fear to come up in my messaging of my ambassador letters and, and that kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I wish I had a, like an A plus B equals C equation that worked for everybody all the time. But this is where the art comes in and meets the science a little bit. So here's what I will say. When in doubt, fewer words win. Number two, this is why we don't just walk around sharing our DCPS with people and leaving it there. This is where all of your other marketing copy does most of the heavy lifting. Mm -hmm. Um, And then number three, challenge yourself where can i highlight my methodology because that's where i put this that's the category i put this in that you you do a lot of work with fear that's the methodology the outcome is coming home to themselves right right so if we're getting too uh, too focused on our methodology we're missing the point you've all heard me talk about this before but there's that distinction between describing the leather seats and the snacks on the airplane versus the sandy beaches in Maui that you'll enjoy once you get there. Mm -hmm. So I just wonder if focusing on fear actually is describing the leather seats. So how do we know? We start with as few words as possible. And then given the data points I just outlined with Christina, we can more easily, we can make an educated guess about how much of our methodology needs to come in. Okay. Thank you. Is that helpful? Yeah. 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 And then I guess another piece is like, when I try this t-shirt on, does it feel like me? So with Christina, we had this t-shirt, right? I help women build more confidence and knowing her like I do and knowing her work, it just felt like it wasn't, it was more of a tank top and we wanted a an actual three quarter length t-shirt. It just wasn't quite enough there to match her. Okay. Cool. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Okay, let's move on to our next volunteer. Thanks everybody. Um, Tanya, I'm gonna hand you the mic. Thanks for volunteering. Thank you, Dallas. So before we dig into your official DCPS, tell everyone Mm -hmm. who you help and how. I help uh, mid-career healthcare leaders, doctors, nurses, administrators, I help them kind of reconnect with their passion for healthcare because a lot of them are burnt out and especially now and their lives are changing and their work is changing and they hate it and they want to leave. Mm-hmm. And they reconnect with why they went into healthcare for the first, in the first place. And they figure out what they really want to do now and focus on now okay. so that they, they can do both their healing careers and have time for their families and their friends. Got it. So do they really want to leave or do they feel like that's the, that the only option is if, if, if I'm going to have a life, I have to leave. I don't, my folks don't feel they have to leave. I just mm-hmm. think they feel they have too much on their plates and they've fallen into doing too many things uh-huh. all by themselves, you yeah. know, and they're not say my, one of my dream clients, he was healing patients. He, I mean, seeing patients, he was a uh, specialist. He was teaching students. He was writing papers and he was trying to help his daughter do her classwork during with COVID while his partner was helping her parents through an illness. Right. You know, so they're just, and they have no one to talk to because they're used to being in charge and they're afraid yes. to, they're afraid to talk with somebody about all this that's going on and, mm-hmm. and figuring out what their priorities are. Yeah. So they don't want to leave, but no. they just feel it's like, stop the world. I want to get off. Yes. Got it. 
How do they want to feel? They want to feel like they're captaining, effectively captaining their ships through stormy seas. You know, mm. they, they want to feel like they know their big picture goals and that they are making progress towards their ultimate destination. A lot of them are reviewing what they really want to do. So how do they want to feel? They want clarity around their truest goals. Mm. And they want to make time for those they love mm. while pursuing those goals. Got it. So they want to feel really clear about their, their truest goals. Yep. They want to know that they're moving toward those goals, even if it's slow movement. Yep. And they want to ha make and have time to spend with those they love. Yes. Okay. Awesome. So what for you, if anything, feels like is missing from your current, let me read it actually, and then I want to hear what you feel might be missing, these are my notes, from your DCPS. I help healthcare leaders stop feeling overwhelmed and focus their energies on meaningful goals so that they can enjoy their daily work, family life, and careers without compromising their values or burning out. So what feels amiss about this for you? feels fine. It feels fine. Yeah. Great. I'm okay with that too. Can we play around with it just for some fun? Yes, you can. Cause it, it just feels kind of too wordy and yeah. Well, you use the word fine and that I agree. It's fine. Like, let's see if we can tighten it up and make it awesome. Okay. That sounds good. Yeah. Cause the fine had no energy either. And as a coach, you know, know. it's like, I, <laughs> that's like, not acceptable. Totally. Fine is not acceptable. Totally. That's what every good boy does. Fine. <laughs> I want you to watch the playback and look at your face and shoulders as you say it's fine because it wasn't wasn't very fine. <laughs> All right. So my first question here, you say I help healthcare leaders. Your target audience, do they identify themselves as healthcare leaders? they they're they are physician and nurse leaders i, I guess but so but, but then you leave out because mm -hmm. I, I do the whole mid-level so do, yeah they do they do they do so if they i do. if i am your dream client and i heard you say i help healthcare leaders i would say oh yep i'm i am a leader yes okay yes. yeah Great. They know that they, they hold leadership positions. Yes. Got it. I help healthcare leaders right now. It says stop feeling overwhelmed and focus their energies on meaningful goals. I loved what you said around maintaining clarity of their truest goals. So if we took just what you said as our jumping off point, what it would look like. And as I type, I help healthcare leaders gain clarity on their truest goals and know they're always moving toward them. It's true. Yeah. What about the family piece? What they feel is that um, if they really do a hundred percent around their you know, their, their leadership goals, they don't have time for their family, they can't juggle them both. Ah, yes. So I help healthcare leaders gain clarity on what if it was just, I help healthcare leaders move steadily toward their truest goals without is compromising, missing out, losing touch? What is the thing they're afraid will happen with their family? They die and they haven't gone to their soccer games or like, I mean, yeah, mm -hmm. they, they, 
they've missed out on their their lives that the the cats in the cradle yeah that that whole Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that whole song where you just you've been so busy working that you haven't had time to see your kids grow up Mm. it's it's a really demanding career Mm. I'm just going to grab what you said and then we'll refine it without feeling like you you're miss uh you're working all the time and missing your kids growing up not our final answer but I wanted to grab the words I help healthcare leaders move steadily toward their truest, truest goals without missing out on. I think it's just time. life. It's life because you got. Uh, that is it, because they've had their heads in books since they were in ninth grade and now they're mid career and they've said, wait a minute. I've been gone after that, the gold yes. ring and um, yep. I've missed, missed out on too much. I help healthcare leaders move steadily toward their truest goals without missing out on life. That works. It does work. It's, it's the only thing is that in the swirl, one of my real gifts is helping them gain clarity about what they really want, because some of them think they want something like I want to be department chair. I want to be, they think they want this leadership goal. And when they really think about it, they discover, or when they, when we partner together, they discover those aren't their truest goals. So, so yeah. they, they partnering to gain clarity is really uh, a key component of it. And people are yeah. surprised at the end of the first hour <laughs> that what they think they want isn't what they want at all. Yes. So is it I help healthcare leaders clarify what they really want and move steadily toward their truest goals without missing out on life? That's good. That 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 captures um, the partnership and and the service that's really offered. Yeah, because then they can breathe. They can breathe Mm. and they can say these are the three or four things that are really important to me. Yeah. And yeah. Especially amidst all the noise that they they experience every day, their responsibilities, the chatter in their mind about what where they're not meeting expectations, yep. the, the chaos of the their work, especially over the last couple of years, yeah, 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 and the pressures have gotten even greater. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. So. Can I hear you say it? I help healthcare leaders clarify what they really want and move steadily toward their truest goals without missing out on life. It's super succinct. I'm just watching you take it in. Yeah. You want to share? I, something about me wants to say and not miss out on life. Something, you know, towards their true goals. Mm-hmm. It, instead of, mm-hmm. does that sort of? Let's see if if that's how we talk. I help healthcare leaders clarify what they really want and move steadily toward their truest goals. And not you're right. It's, it's right. It is without because we have an and like and move toward their yeah goals, yeah 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 right without missing out on life. That's my favorite part, the missing out on life. Yeah, it is. And that really is good. what they're really feeling. They're oh. really feeling like there's no way I can do it all. And yeah. Thank you for doing this work. Oh, it's really gratifying. Yeah, I can imagine. I just love it. I just love it. Yeah. Do you feel complete with your updated DCPS here? 
Yeah. The question is, I think they inherently ask the, how do you do that? Well, that's what we want. That's yeah. how we know we we're onto something with our dream client power statement. If it is, if it sparks interest and people want to know more. And this is where you get into, well, you're probably focusing your energies on a lot of things that don't matter to you. Right. It It's true. And they're afraid to delegate. So that's part yeah. of the toolkit is figuring out how to reframe. Yeah. How to delegate. Yeah. Uh, yeah. How to even find it, figure out what their bosses really want. <laughs> yeah. So if we tried to pack all of the tangible tools, measurable actions, and nuances of coaching that you bring to your clients, your DCPS would be like three and a half chapters long. Right? So this, it's true. <laughs> it's true. So this, I think this is another addition to my answer to Karen's question. You know, how do I know if I'm adding too much process or not enough? Again, it needs to feel like you and Tanya. She's a very skilled coach and has a ton of experience. So her the processes and tools she uses are varied per person. And it's a vast library of knowledge she's pulling from. We can't if we're trying to squeeze all that into a sentence or two, we lose people. So then often the choice becomes, OK, I'm actually not going to talk about the process at all, because that's where we get distracted from the heart of what matters, which is the outcome. Does that land for you, Tanya? That absolutely lands. And partly they're looking for reasons not to care for themselves. Uh, and I'm calling my business Thrive Rx because they're good at healing others. Yeah. But physician needs to heal thyself, you yeah. know, put on your own um, oxygen mask first. That absolutely applies to them. And I think in some ways they're looking for reasons not to care for yeah. themselves. Yeah. So if we have a big list of the how in your DCPS, here are you were giving them a list of excuses not to say yes. <laughs> That's Got right. It. That's great. Right. Good. Well, I like it. I think we have something to work with here. I help healthcare leaders clarify what they really want and move steadily toward their truest goals without missing out on life. That's fantastic. And that meets my um the spark interviews too. That's what people were saying. Yeah. You know, they, yeah. So thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks, Tanya. Thank you. All right. So up next, we are going to hear uh, from our next volunteer who is, I gotta, I've got too many tabs open. Here we go. Up after Tanya, we're going to hear from Christina and then we'll wrap it up with Stephanie. But first let's hear from Brett. Brett is here. He has a dream client power statement that he's worked to dial in and connect to and i think it's at a place brett where you're really proud of it so could you share it with the group absolutely yeah um i help lgbtqia plus creatives make money doing what they love if you want to move from imposter to influencer i can help you have the courage to become a full-time creative so fancy so good <laughs> how does it feel sharing it to it the feels group. great. Yeah. I mean, I never, I feel like, I mean, just for people's knowledge, I feel like I never actually get to share it in that form, but mm. having that as like a form to always draw from is really great. Yeah. You know, you raise a really important point, which is we don't really, the, the, for me and tell me, Brett, if you agree, the deepest value of a clear dream client power statement is so that we can reside within it. Yes. Right. And it's rare that we actually recite it outside of hive calls. It's exactly. rare that we actually every recite hive call it. you do. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> but it really it, it is an anchor right for us right. as we're creating content or having that the day where our self confidence might be waning. It's or your parents great. are asking you, like, what do you do? Right. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Great. Thanks for sharing that. That was awesome. Right. Really good. All right. Let's hear from Christina. I'm so excited to be Yay. here. Thank you, Dallas. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited too. All right. So before we dive into your official DCPS, just share with everyone who you help and how. Sure. Um, I think more or less what I've identified as um, people who tend to 
have a lot of things that they want to accomplish, but they struggle with feeling like they have enough time to do it all. Um, and as I'm looking at this DCPS, I wish it came out that smoothly. <laughs> um, but I, I certainly resonated a lot with um, what Tanya shared. And I think at the heart of it is a fear of waking up to one day realizing that they didn't do the thing that they really wanted to do. Mm -hmm. um, and where did my time go? Mm -hmm. So, Got it. So I just captured what you said in case we want to use it. Um, I help people who feel like they have a lot to accomplish, find the time to do it all or create the time, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. All right. So if you're open to it, I'm going to share my screen. We'll take yes. a look at your dream client power statement as it stands right now. Here we go. I'm going to read it to you. Let's hear how it how it feels <laughs> for you. I help high achievers make headway on what makes them feel purposeful and fulfilled and free up their time so they can make time for the things that bring joy into their lives without letting others down. So letting others down, is that a big mm, obstacle or concern for your audience? Yes, um, it's a combination of letting others down um, through whether it's family or it's uh, perhaps they weren't putting in those extra hours at their job mm. um, to keep their boss, you know, in a, in a favorable place or position with them. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay. I'm typing what you said earlier. Uh, find the time to do it all without letting others down. Perhaps I'm like thinking to myself out loud as we record. Here we go. All right. So here's what I'm thinking is a great place to start. There are extra words in your DCPS that almost it's it reminds me very much of what we learned in high school English class, where the first paragraph we summarize what we're going to talk about in the next paragraphs. And then the second paragraph, we set the state like we it's three paragraphs in before we make our point. So let's yes. first see if we can just get rid of any superfluous wording, and then we'll massage things from there. Does that sound okay? Oh, that sounds wonderful. Okay. I help high achievers make headway on what makes them feel purposeful and fulfilled and free up their time. So what is a more concise way that we can say make head, do we need even to say make headway on what makes them feel purposeful? Could we just say, I help high achievers feel purposeful and fulfilled? Hmm. I thought about that. The, the additional language was literally taken from verbatim from past clients and discovery call language. But, mm. um, I think again, for me, this was like the concern of, am I addressing the how enough? Um, like, what is it that they're wanting to feel like, what does fulfillment look like for them? Um, and so I, yeah, but Oh, you know what's interesting your question. about that? <laughs> it's possible that given where your dream client sits today, the promise of feeling purposeful and fulfilled sounds like bullshit because mm -hmm. it's so far removed from their actual experience. Mm -hmm. I'd agree. So for them, a more heart connected milestone or goal is headway. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I noticed um, a lot of times in talking to them, what tends to stand out to me a lot is a very like achievement oriented language. I don't know that they even identify as high achievers is the problem. Um, next question. Yeah. And that's the thing I've struggled a lot with. Do I include it? Do I not include it? I've even eliminated it, put people <laughs> and uh -huh. it feels much too vague for me. Mm -hmm. Um, but a lot of the language tends to orient around, um, like making, making progress, um, literally like making headway. Like I know that I've done the thing and, um, often it's talked about more in a negative way. Like, I feel like I haven't done anything. Keep talking. I'm, I'm just grabbing um, some key things that you're saying here. Yeah. So, I mean, a few things that 
I've noted, I just kind of had his notes to myself to bring to this conversation where one of the quotes from one of my dream clients um, was very verbatim, like uh, in terms of he was talking about like his motivation to get started on you know, his passion project. He's like, why can't I tap into that version of myself without the room on fire? Um, and another one was like, you know, in my next career, if I wasn't having to do this right now, then I would be da, 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 da. Mm. Um, so there's almost a sense of holding themselves back from allowing themselves to do what, or spend more time doing things that they really just lose themselves in doing, maybe even tap into a state of flow with and find a lot of gratification in because there's a heavy guilt and a sense of, you know, I haven't earned it yet. Um, or I need to be responsible and, and take care of doing these other things before I can make time for this thing. Yes. Okay. So what we've talked about so far is where your dream client is at is in a place of they're deep, they're deeply aware that they're not living up to their own dreams and expectations. And they believe that their circumstances can't like, and they haven't given themselves permission to change that yet. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's almost like they're, I love that you use the word permission because it certainly feels a lot of times like they're waiting for that permission slip. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So could it be something like, I love the room on fire. I'm trying to squeeze. It's not going to make its way in, but I really <laughs> wish we could find a way for that to make its way in. It's I know. So I love that too. Maybe it's going to be in, in copy somewhere, but I, yeah. I loved the visu- visual with that yes. as well. <laughs> yes. All right, so here's a very messy version here. I help purposeful people. So there's purpose. Would your audience resonate with being a purposeful person? Hmm. Or people with big goals. You said that earlier as well. I think they definitely identify with big goals. I'm not sure about the purposeful. I would have to test that out and see how that resonates. Sometimes if someone feels this is just me talking. You, you're going to talk to your audience. They are the real experts. But if I feel like the only time I get around to the thing that really matters is if the room is on fire, nothing about that is purposeful. (laughs) Okay. I help people with big goals and no time. Stop waiting for permission to make real progress toward the things they want. Oh, I got chills from that. (laughs) Yeah. Um, people. Mm -hmm. Okay. I help people with big goals and no time stop waiting for permission to make real progress on the things they want without feeling guilty, self-indulgent, or like the room's on fire. (laughs) I really don't know why I'm trying. (laughs) What if you think back to your spark interviews, what are other, mm, ways that they describe their discomfort around taking the time to do the thing. Mm. Their discomfort around taking the time to do the thing. I think a lot of times I'm trying to remember exact verbiage. Hmm. That's a little difficult. Um, okay. Great. So I'm right now I have this blank space that perhaps we fill in and perhaps we don't. Have they shared before that there's like, they feel guilty? Yeah, it, it usually takes, um, I don't remember guilt specifically being the word. Mm. I feel like that's me putting my words Uh. in their mouth. It's more like, oh, but I need to X, Y, Z, whatever it is that they need to do for someone else. And it comes out feeling kind of like a very 
obligatory heavy like you can tell they care they have good intentions behind it but it comes from the energy of like Mm self-preservation fear that maybe they might jeopardize something and ruin it all Mm -hmm. you know um like the stakes feel high and it's usually involving their work something that they've worked really hard to build you know a, a great reputation for they you know they're good at what they do and therefore they love feeling that they're you know they have that security and knowing that they're doing a good job but there's that little voice that's kind of constantly there telling them like yeah but don't mess up and one of the things that's tied to the don't mess up is if i'm not you know dedicating all of my extra time to yeah almost like depriving themselves a bit of the thing that they feel like they don't quite deserve yet. Yeah. So I'm trying to go back though, to your question of Mm -hmm. what are the words um, they would use to describe that? Mm. I feel like you described the circumstance really well, Christina, they feel this external pressure, a deep sense of obligation, a fear of disappointing others. It does Mm -hmm. not come naturally at all for them to put their own needs, goals, dreams, desires ahead of anything else. So this is, as I share this, what's coming up with this audience, if we use that kind of language, again, it's too big a gap, right? Mm -hmm. Like, I'm going to help you put yourself first. That's what they're like, (sighs) what language did you just speak? Because it's not the language that I understand. Yes. So I wonder if it's as simple as I'm just so I'm typing here, I'm going to read everything I wrote, and then I'll share my thoughts. I help people with big goals and no time. That to me is the way that they would expire, um, describe their the experience they're in. Mm-hmm. Like why they have no time. That's where the coaching comes in. Yes, right. But their experience before working with you is one of not having enough time. Correct. Yes. I help people with big goals and no time stop waiting for permission to make real progress toward the things they want. And then I added this without dropping any balls or disappointing people. And I don't know if that just feels like extra to you or if it feels essential. Hmm. I certainly, well, I think there's a little bit of the dropping any balls and disappointing people kind of feel similar, Mm. but in my mind, I know they're different, Um, but maybe it could be even condensed to one or the other. Um, I feel the like disappointing people's tied into the like dropping the ball. Ah, yes. Got it. So if I drop, if I am your dream client and I drop a ball, I know that also means disappointing people. Yeah, I've heard because I feel like I've received it in both ways. Mm -hmm. And it'll be interesting to see, you know, if one resonates more than almost like an A-B test with, you know, using one phrase versus the other. Um. I don't find it coincidental that a lot of times the ones who might use the language of the dropping any balls also struggle with fear of disappointing people. So, (laughs) um, yeah, this is, and you may find that language like disappointing people, Mm -hmm. that might be the thing that deep down is going on for me, but I, it's not something I didn't say out loud really in that way, or Mm -hmm. even be able to receive without judgment. Yes. It feels almost a little too vulnerable to admit it, to say, Mm -hmm. I'm afraid of disappointing people that more likely would say, you know, I don't have time. uh, (laughs) Yeah. I just don't have time for, for all the things. Why can't there be more hours in a day? Are there never enough hours in a day is what I always hear. Mm, Great. So how does this land for you? Can I hear you say what you have in bold there? Okay. I help people with big goals and no time stop waiting for permission to make real progress toward the things they want without dropping any balls. Hmm. I don't know if I'm, if it's just because it's not my language, you know, the, the no time, <laughs> my coaching brain is, it's like, of course, but I'm putting it in a language that 
feels recognizable to them. So maybe I just need to get used to verbalizing it. <laughs> right. Yeah, this is tricky because this must reflect the state your dream client is in bef when they're ready to begin the work, not even like a day after they've begun it. Because one of the mm -hmm. first things I'm guessing you do in your work with your clients is help yes. them change their relationship to this idea of time and choice. A hundred percent. Yes. Yes. Okay. So if you were to now row, what, what actions do you need to take in order to road test this, get the words where they feel like they are accurate to your clients, but also authentic to you? What's the next step here? Hmm. Um, I really haven't tested a lot of language in my marketing. I mean, a lot of times what I speak to are personal stories. Um, mm -hmm. I, I mean, a lot of my audience seems to resonate very well, but I think I've recognized through recent calls here with the hive that I don't create enough of a gap in my discovery calls. And that's more the issue than attracting the right client. Yeah. Um, I think it's more of a me thing for me to feel good about having the words, um, concisely, uh, for my, my material. But, mm -hmm. um, I just came across an interesting comment here from Angela sharing, you know, wondering about the things they want. It makes me think of objects. And I'm wondering, I think that's one of the things in the back of my mind that's troubled me about my, my DCPS is, is it too vague in terms of what they want? Um, because a lot of times it looks like and maybe this is where it might differentiate an audience. It's usually some sort of a side project, like a side passion project, something that if they could get paid to do it, they would do it. Um, so it's not necessarily a thing, you know, although the things might be some of the side effect of them doing what they love, mm -hmm. um, like the house, the car, a lot of times they'll have those things, the physical things, but they still won't feel that sense of, I am allowing myself to fully immerse in doing what it is that really lights me mm -hmm. up. Okay. Okay. I'm just grabbing a couple of possibilities here. So I help people with big goals in no time. You're going to try that on um, and then the stop waiting for permission to make real progress. We agree that we've got that piece. There's the permission mm -hmm. piece and all they want is progress because they're not making any great. And then it could be toward their passion project or the things they really want or their big goals or, or what really lights them up. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion, if you're open to an assignment here, can you reach out to clients you've worked with in the past, maybe three to five of them mm -hmm. and have a conversation? And it might look something like this. I'm trying to, in as succinct a way as possible, encapsulate the work I do so that people who don't know me yet can have a better understanding. And I'd like your feedback. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. How does this sound to you? And maybe you just read it with um, one of these possible endings, right? I help people with big goals in no time. Stop waiting for permission to make real progress toward their passion project. Get feedback and then say, mm -hmm. do any of these other results ring more true for you? Another way to say that would be if you were to replace toward their passion project, project with something that feels more aligned or accurate to your experience, what would you say instead? Yeah, I love that. Um, I definitely would love to hear directly from them mm -hmm. and how they describe what it is they want. Mm -hmm. um, because otherwise I'm just plugging stuff in. <laughs> yeah, totally. So I think there are a few here um, toward their passion project, toward the things they really want, toward their big goals, toward what really lights them up, or it could be something as simple as toward the stuff they've been putting off. <laughs> yeah. Which is a little bit more, a little less aspirational, but perhaps the way they actually think in this moment. Sure. Yeah. 
And I'm leaning in that direction, even this by using people with no time, because I just caught how you described the way they describe their circumstances and they have judgment around their current circumstance. Completely, yes. Right? So we don't want to use judgment in your language, but we want to meet them where they're at. And sometimes that aspirational language, again, is too far of a gap. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I completely agree. And that's why I haven't steered towards using words like the passion project mm-hmm. or even sometimes big goals to a certain extent, but um, it'll be interesting to, to try on and see what, what feedback I get. Yeah. Um, I'll be eager to find out. <laughs> oh, I can't wait. So my vote for today is I help people with big goals in no time. Stop waiting for permission to make real progress toward the stuff they've been putting off. Um, that just feels like exactly what I might say to somebody. So that's my vote, but yeah, you're going to go out and now do some markets, like testing this with people <laughs> who are more familiar with the, with the work. Is that accurate? I love it. Yes. Cool. Great. Is there anything else that you want to ask or share before we wrap up? I think just every time I have an opportunity to reflect on this out loud, um, it just is so helpful in, in getting me out of my head and more into that feeling place mm-hmm. of it. I think it also helps me to disconnect my own judgments of myself around my own statements and words and helps me return it back to, I think, really the core of, of the work. Um, yeah. Because I, I hear and I can see faces when I read this and I remember, you know, those conversations and a lot of like the pain around not having that clarity or not having, you know, the, the beliefs that that's possible for them. Um, right. And it's, it, it just brings me a lot back to my, my feeling of purpose. So thank you so much. It feels really good. You're welcome. That's awesome. Or even like, there's no room for the judgment of, well, is my goal big enough? Does the thing I'm, I've been putting off count as a, as a passion project, right? Yes, Mm -hmm. absolutely. Yeah. Thank Mm -hmm. you so much. It's great. Thank you for volunteering. (laughs) That was super fun. (laughs) Thanks for having me. All right. I think we've got one more volunteer here. Are there any observations or questions from the group today before we move on? You can raise your hand and we're just getting ready to hear next from Stephanie. Awesome. Great. Stephanie, I'm going to hand you the mic. Hi, Dallas. Thank you. You're welcome. (laughs) Thanks for volunteering. Okay, so before we dig in, just share with us in your own words today who you help and how. So I'm a book coach. I help writers write, uh, usually first time novelists, write the story they've been wanting to write and putting off for any number of reasons. Um, I have kind of struggled a little bit with this process because there's two things that I'm considering. One is the type of client that I want to work with, my dream client. And the other is the type of story I want to work with. And I need those two things to to work together. And so, um, because there's a lot of really wonderful people writing books that I don't want to work on. (laughs) So, yeah, so I've been grappling with this a bit. Okay, so you're really clear that because we've talked on a few other calls before, but you, so my understanding is that Stephanie, you're really clear on your g- zone of genius when it comes to coaching on writing a type of book. Yeah, I'm really clear on the type of story, and I'm really clear on the place in the process where they are. I like to work with them more toward the beginning than the end of the process. Great. And tell us a little bit about the type of story. So I love stories that are emotionally driven, that are character based, that are really um, about regular people living regular lives and growing through their interactions with each other. Mm -hmm. I'm a sociologist by (laughs) at heart. And I just really love the, the power of those kinds of stories. I think they can change hearts and minds. Great. 
those are my favorite kinds of stories to read too. Mm. Um, if I'm a beginning writer, how aware am I about the type of story I like to write? Um, that depends on the writer. My experience is they're usually vaguely aware. <laughs> okay. They may not know exactly what the, like, where it would sit on the bookshelves, you know, once it's published, but mm -hmm. they, they at least know um, that it's, you know, an epic adventure or it's more of a quiet story about relationships. Okay. Okay. So are they more aware of the genre or more aware of the type of story? Let me ask it in a different way. Mm -hmm. I may not have the words for it, but if I'm your dream client and I hear you say something about a character-based story or an emotionally driven story, I might hear those words and think, ah, yes, that's the kind of story this is. Is that accurate? Yeah. Um, I don't know that that's accurate. They, okay. it, again, it kind of depends. Some writers come in really clear. They're saying, oh, I'm writing a, you know, contemporary women's fiction, you know, and they've got a really clear idea. Other times they're just like, they just launch into telling me what the story is about and they don't know the official name of the genre, which yeah. is why I don't want to say a specific genre in yeah. my, in my, but for me, it's really about those stories of just those more quiet stories. And I don't know how to convey that. Yeah. And I, I kind of feel like those are the people who are finding me. But when I did client search, my messaging was way off because I got people writing all sorts of stuff coming to my calls. And I was like, I don't do self-help, <laughs> you know, yes. um, I don't do sci-fi. So yeah, that was, so I need to figure out a way to do both. Okay. And it might not all be in this statement. I know. Uh, <laughs> you just took the words right out of my yeah. mouth. So the dream client power statement, like I said, when I was talking to Brett, in a lot of ways, the person it's most meant to serve is us. So now mm -hmm. like I'm really clear and grounded in who I help and how. Yeah. It's also an easy way to answer the question, what do you do? Yeah, that yeah. if crafted clearly, um, sparks interest from the people it should spark interest from. Mm -hmm. And maybe sparks a, oh, that's nice from the people it should not spark interest from. We're <laughs> fine with that, right? So I just wonder if by trying to squeeze a description of the type of book in, we may make it hard for the right people to self-select. So we, we may have to have in your intake forms, definitely in your overall marketing message, let those places be the place that help you um, more easily help the right writers come forward. And the more established your business becomes, the fewer and fewer, fewer science fiction writers will come your way. But I just worry that we actually might create confusion for the right people if we try to speak to where they're at in the process and the type of story, especially because you like to help the writers who are at the beginning, which means they're likely to be less clear. Does that how does that land for you, Stephanie? Yeah, that makes that makes a lot of sense. That makes okay. a lot of sense. I can okay. see how it would be really easy to fit that into other areas of marketing. So, yes, right. Okay. All right. I'm going to share my screen and we'll look at what we've got here. I help writers with a strong desire to write an emotionally driven story, plan, draft, and revise their novel so that they can get it done without getting stuck or succumbing to self-doubt. Oh my God. I love this. I can't, I already know where we're going. I'm so, so excited. Good. <laughs> okay. So can we say I help new writers? Yep. Uh, Although yeah. I did, mm -hmm. if I can just interject, I Please. did have first time novelists there instead of writers. Mm -hmm. But then I was thinking, you know, like myself, I wrote a book without any support the first time. And I wish like I then I went and got a book coach because it was so but I'm not a first time novelist. So I didn't want to like shut the door on somebody like me 
Right. Yeah. Cause if you've never done it, like, Ooh, novelist, like, do I get to call myself that if it's yeah. it just, again, could spark the thing you're trying to eliminate for them, which is self doubt. Uh -huh. How does this land? I help new writers get, or even I help writers. I help writers get going on their first novel without getting stuck or succumbing to self doubt, or I help writers create, write, Okay, I'm talking too much. Mm. I'm going to say it again. How does this land? I help writers <laughs> get going on their first novel without feeling stuck or succumbing to self-doubt. Well, it feels good. I um, I mean, I like how succinct it is. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's missing something and I don't know what. Okay, great. And the honest truth is I don't want to promise that they won't feel stuck because they will. <laughs> <laughs> it's part of the right. It's part of the process. Right? Yeah, it's part of the process. And the succumbing to self-doubt, I also am not, I know those were my words, but I'm not sure I like that either now because they will. I mean, it's part of the process, right? But it's, uh, it's about not, it's about getting started and keeping going and not giving up. And because they know the power of their story. Okay, I help writers, again, this is not a final draft. I help writers get going on their first novel um, without giving up <laughs> when self-doubt, fear, or confusion arises. Or I help writers get going on their first novel I don't like it going on their first novel. It doesn't quite sound that they've probably been getting going on their first novel yep. for a long time. They've right? been spinning in it for a long time. Um, mm, mm -hmm. Yeah, they gets finally start, finally write. Mm -hmm. Hold on, I'm getting some inspiration. Nobody talk. <laughs> Uh, I help writers get their first novel out in the world, despite the self-doubt, criticism, and confusion that comes with your, whenever you write your first book, something like that. Yeah. I like that despite, mm -hmm. despite the things. And I think Danny in the comments said, um, finally finish. And I think I like that too, mm -hmm. because that's something that, um, that's language that they'll use when they come to a call. I just want to finally write this thing. I just want to finally finish it. Okay. I help writers finally finish their first novel. I love that the podcast recording is going to have like the click, 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 click of my <laughs> keyboard. I help writers finally finish their first novel and face like and confidently face the self-doubt, the being in the boom that's bound to appear. Or could it be I help writers finally finish their first novel? Yeah, I like that. If you want to tell an emotionally driven story, I can help you get unstuck and get your book out in the world. Okay, we're like moving backwards here, but. Can I read it? Yeah. <laughs> I need to hear it out loud. Yep. I help writers finally finish their first novel. If you want to tell an emotionally driven story, I can help you get unstuck and get your book out into the world. Yeah, I don't actually help them with publishing, so uh, okay. I will pass them off to somebody else. Mm -hmm. um, but, and get it on the page or... Okay. One, my sort of, my, my, my zone of genius is helping them design a roadmap for the story so that they know where they're going as they write. 
And so I don't know if there's a way to incorporate that or if that just yeah. complicates it. Maybe not. So this could be a great example of where inserting the how is helpful to people. So the writers you really love coaching the most, mm -hmm. what words would you use to describe the stuckness that they're in? Oh, um, so I actually wrote down some things <laughs> for my ideal clients or actual dream clients that I have. Um, one said she had an idea, but it felt too big. She didn't know where to start. Another one was overwhelmed because it was in too many bits and pieces. Mm -hmm. Um, another was she started and got stuck and didn't know how to proceed. Mm -hmm. Overwhelmed by all the moving parts. Is that? Yeah. Okay. So what did you, you, you had words for that. You said they're overwhelmed by all I the said things. too many bits and pieces, but that was, I don't know if I like that. <laughs> okay. Okay. Oh, we're getting somewhere here. I help writers finally finish their first novel. If your idea feels too big, um, you've started, but now feel stuck but now feel stuck or you're just overwhelmed by the process, uh -huh. we can build and tell me what your zone of genius is. It's a building a roadmap of what? Yeah, craft a roadmap of the, of of the story, story. Mm -hmm. to make it as powerful as it deserves to be. Okay, we're almost there. I help writers finally finish their first novel. If your idea feels too big, does that, is this true? Their idea feels too big? Um, I don't know that that's true, actually. Okay. I mean, it can't, it does. It's, it feels unwieldy, right? when you've written a, when you're writing a book, it just feels unwieldy. And that's my word. But every time I use it with a client, they're like, you're like, what yes, is that's exactly what oh, it is. Oh, okay. If you're yeah. overwhelmed, how about we just do this? If you're overwhelmed, stuck, or overwhelmed or stuck, I can help you craft a roadmap of your story. Mm. Yep. I'm not giving up on this. I hope overwhelmed writers. or scared. Or stuck. Ah, scared or just stuck. Mm, that's nice. I can help you craft a roadmap for the story. And then it's like you said to make it as powerful as it deserves to be. But there's also that part about like, and you can finally finish this damn yeah. thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, scared or just craft a roadmap of your story. I can help you craft a roadmap. Nope. I um, help writer. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, a story I can be proud of. Mm, that's what we wanted. Yes. Thanks, Danny. <laughs> a fellow book coach, like throwing you a lifeline. <laughs> that yep. was your, you just used your phone a friend. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> that's really good. A story you can be proud of. Oh, that's so good. Makes me want to cry a little bit. A roadmap. Here's... I help, let's hear it from you. Okay. I help writers. I might take out the word first, just because that's sort of sticky for me. Oh, okay. Um, I help writers finally finish their novel. If you're overwhelmed, scared, or just stuck, I can help you craft a roadmap of your story of... To write... Story... A book... You can be proud of. Yeah. Yeah. Or a roadmap of your story, yes. I can help you craft a roadmap of your story to write a book so that you can... So that... No. A book you're words. proud of. A book you're proud of. Yep. Let's hear it again. 
I help writers finally finish their novel. If you're overwhelmed, stuck, scared, or just stuck, I can help you craft a roadmap of your story to write a book you're proud of. Roadmap, so you can write a book you can be proud of. Yeah. yeah. So you can write a book you can be proud of. A yeah. Like can, yeah. So to write a book you can be proud of. I don't want the can be and can be. And now I'm getting all picky, but. To write a book you can be proud of. You will be proud of. Mm. I can help you craft a roadmap of your story to write a book you will be proud of. Yes. Yeah. I kind of got goosebumps a little bit. I, I'm a little <laughs> choked. Because that's what we all want, writers, right? All mm -hmm. creatives, all everybody. We just want to be proud of what we put out in the world. I'm just sitting with it and I like it. And this is where your other content is going to have to do some heavy lifting because you're going to get science fiction writers here and self-help writers and but this is even if all you ever did was client search right you have yeah. an in, intake form that says i help writers who write an emotionally driven character-based story is that you yes it's me no it's not great ahead right. Of Carl, right <laughs> right yeah does this feel like something you can work with yeah it really does thank you so much i like it i really like it oh yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You're this welcome. This makes me really happy. <laughs> me too. And it's amazing that you did that after doing six others or however many you just did. <laughs> I, I just dropped into the zone. Who's next? <laughs> <laughs> Great. So for, for me, the takeaway, thank you, Stephanie. Yeah. So for everybody, the takeaway here. And I'd love to hear in the chat takeaways from the group. Number one, like don't try this at home. And what I mean is at some point with our dream client power statements, we have to get other eyes on it. Number two, we have to let go of our attachments because sometimes that can really cloud our vision. Stephanie, you're a good example of that. Like we could have down, gone down a path of really trying to cram in this very, um, unclear way of describing a clear type of story and i think it would have served as a distraction and then number three it's always a work in progress this is, i promise you stephanie this will not be your final dream client power statement but it's final enough for today and then we go out and we start creating content and we realize oh this thing that i'm really proud of that comes up over and over again with my clients is the thing i now want to lead with but this is really just about getting things going. So yeah, Danny says the client's language is the most important thing. Absolutely agreed. Christina's takeaway is to test it. Karen says my takeaway is to use my dream client power statement to get people to ask me how <laughs> I get them to the destination. Absolutely. All right, so an assignment, whether you're listening to the podcast or you're here on the call with me live, whatever you call it inside the hive it's your dream client power statement for other people it's your what i do statement or whatever that thing is that you use to describe who you help and how does pull it out off the shelf dust it off and run it by three people this week three tr trusted advisors this week for just a gut reaction from them not editing because then we can have this experience of too many cooks in the kitchen, but what is someone's initial, someone you trust, what is their initial reaction when they hear you tell them your DCPS? All right, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in to the podcast. We will see you back here next week.